Aloha Hawaii Community Foundation team. I want to begin with a story about the retired couple who went to the county fair. And they saw a sign that said plane rides. And they got really excited because they had always wanted to go on a plane ride. But as they got close, they saw it was $50. So they began to turn away. The pilot said, where are you going? And they said, we can't afford $50. And the pilot said, I'll make you a deal. You go up in the air and you don't scream, you get it for free. But if you scream, you pay double. And they said, you're on. Well, this was one sneaky pilot. He did one loop, then he did two loops, and then he did three loops. And as he landed the plane, the pilot said to the wife, I can't believe you didn't scream. She said, well, I thought about it. He said, when? And she said, just before the second loop, when my husband fell out of the plane. Now, she lost perspective on what was important. And if you're coming to a speech about leaving a legacy, you have not lost perspective on what's important. You're thinking about your life and the impact that it can have on other people. In fact, before I go any further, let me thank each of you for the critical work you do to strengthen the foundation of our community. Today, Micah has asked me to talk about leaving a legacy. What impact do you want to make with your life? and my thoughts on how you might go about ensuring you leave a legacy and why it even matters. I speak with some reservation. It feels presumptuous to be speaking about legacies because that suggests I've left one or at least on the way to doing so. The truth is, the longer I live, the more I realize how little I know. As Socrates said, quote, as for me, all I know is that I know nothing, end of quote. I'm here for one reason, Mike invited me, and I'm grateful for the invitation. So why does leaving a legacy even matter? Who really cares? The most compelling reason I can think of is we, you and me, are stewards. Stewards of this world, and we have a responsibility to leave it better than we found it. A wise person once said, our goal should be to, quote, outlive our life, end of quote. Or as Eric Erickson, a noted psychologist, said, I am what survives me. There's an old proverb that says, if you lead a meaningful life, and that is what I believe a legacy is all about, leading a meaningful life. If you lead a meaningful life, goes the proverb, you never really die. Instead, you break into a thousand pieces, each of which stays alive within the people whose lives you've touched along the way. Now, you might be sitting there saying to yourself, Socrates, Eric Erickson, Proverbs, come on, Broderick, you can do better than that. Make it feel real for me. Give me something I can wrap my arms around for why leaving a legacy matters. Well, how about this? In 1993, David Lau's mom wrote to the YMCA, quote, my son David Lau has been a member of the Windward Y for six years. I must commend Julia and Renee for treating David with love, respect, and encouragement. From a mother's perspective, I will never be able to thank Julia and Renee enough for being a part of my son's life, end of quote. Now, more than 35 years later, David Lau works at the Y and is considered one of our very best youth counselors. Ask David Lau if Julia and Renee leaving a legacy matters. A few years ago, I spoke at a conference on trauma. When my speech was over, some people came up to ask me questions. And, and I noticed a young lady on the left, and she couldn't have been older than 25, and she had her head down, and still with her head down, whispered, Judge Broderick, I was a drug addict, and the staff at the Klee Y, they saved my life. We didn't say anything to each other. We hugged, she walked away. And we didn't have to say anything to each other because it was so powerful Ask that un unknown young lady if Kalihi Y staff leaving a legacy matters. And finally, there is Clover. Clover was an eight-year-old girl in our A-plus program. Her parents considered sending her to our summer program. This was a big decision because Clover was born with a rare chromosome defect that affects her cognitive development and muscles. For most of her life, she used a wheelchair and was slowly progressing to a walker. At Clover's YMCA's a program, we provided a one-on-one -on -one adult assistant, Miss Kim. 
Clover's parents noticed the dedication and connection between Miss Kim and Clover, so they felt confident in our summer program would be a positive experience. Well, that summer, it proved beyond positive. It was miraculous. Miss Kim captured on video something Clover's doctors and parents thought was impossible. Their daughter taking her first steps on her own. You can imagine how her parents felt when they saw it. Tears of joy, excitement about what Clover's next steps would be. Ask Clover's parents if Miss Kim leaving a legacy really matters. I would submit that leaving a legacy doesn't just matter, it is almost all that matters. So how are we to know what our legacy, yours and mine, are meant to be? Well, let me start by sharing some thoughts on what I believe you should not consider, not consider in thinking about your legacy. The first is what others want for you, what others with the best intentions think your legacy should be, or what you think they think your legacy should be. Legacies are personal. Do you know what people's number one regret is on their deathbed? By far, their number one regret is that they lived a life based on what they thought others wanted them to do. I'm reminded of the two men who visited their deceased wives at the graveyard. And uh, a man would come and he, one of the men would come and he would leave flowers for his wife. And another man would come and he would leave food for his wife. And one day the man said to the other, do you really think your wife's gonna come up and eat the food? Yes, yeah, said the other man. When your wife comes up and smells the flowers, Legacies, like most things in life, are personal. And all that matters is that it feels right to you. I want to personalize what I mean. When I went to college, I enrolled in pre-med. So my first semester, I took chemistry. I didn't like the sciences, and I was really junk in them. So you might be asking, so why did you major in pre-med? I'll get to that. So all semester, I struggled in chemistry. And when I went to take the final exam, it felt like I had never been enrolled in the course. You know that sick, awful feeling? So I knew my college had a policy where if you failed a course, if you got an F, it did not show up on your transcript. So I turned in a blank answer sheet. Although my F did not show up on my transcript, it meant I got no credit for the course. And to me, it represented failure and shame and a waste of my mom's hard-earned money. As I walked back to the dorm, envisioning calling my mom to explain what had happened, I had an epiphany. The legacy I hoped to leave was not that of a doctor. Instead, that was the legacy I thought my father figure, a doctor himself, wanted me to leave. It was a liberating moment for me, and I never ever again took another science or math course the rest of my life, and for once and for all, totally forgot about being a doctor. Lesson one, a legacy is personal and must come from within you and nobody else. The other thing being a legacy is not about, and this I routinely need to remind myself, and knowing the work all of you do, I suspect you also need to remind yourself, is that leaving a legacy is not about physically and mentally exhausting yourself. It's not about sacrificing your health and well-being. We know that people dedicated to their craft, people like you, must give themselves permission to take care of themselves. Remember when the stewardess tells us to put on our oxygen mask first before trying to help children. You cannot help others. You cannot leave a legacy unless you take care of yourself. Okay, so if the way to ensure we leave a legacy is not about doing what others want us to do, or what will physically and emotionally exhaust us, then what is it about? Well, I believe that above all else, it is about being purposeful. By purposeful, I mean looking inward to identify your strengths. What are you really good at naturally? And what are you really interested in? What do you care about? What are your passions? If you identify what you are naturally good at and what you really care about, you are well on your way to leaving a legacy. In short, your legacy should be a labor of love, not a chore or burden. And one thing I know for certain, the only way to do great work is to love what you do. 
And if you haven't found what you love yet, keep looking. Don't settle. By the way, in 2014, the Deloitte company released a comprehensive report that found that 88% of workers do not have passion for their work. Don't be one of them. Now, all this sounds pretty rational, pretty mechanical, and almost formalistic. But to be purposeful does not mean to reject the life philosophy that your life will somehow all come together, often in ways that you never could have anticipated. I'm reminded of the Irish singer hired to perform at a funeral, which in Ireland are festive celebrations of a life well lived. When the singer arrived at the cemetery, to his disappointment, he saw the men shoveling dirt in a hole. He obviously had missed the service. But in honor of the deceased, he decided to sing anyway. So he belted out the most uplifting Irish song, and the men who finished shoveling the dirt in the hole joined him, culminating in a crescendo of celebration for the deceased. As the entertainer got into his car to drive away, he heard one of the workers say to the other, well, I'll be darned. I've been burying septic tanks for 20 years, and I've never seen such a celebration. Sometimes we can leave legacies we didn't even intend to. To leave a legacy, we must be purposeful, yes, but sometimes only by connecting the dots backward can we see the connection, the thread of our life decisions. I first learned of this idea of connecting the dots backward when I read Steve Jobs' 2005 commencement speech at Stanford University. Jobs had dropped out of college because his parents couldn't afford it. But he then audited the classes that he actually had an interest in. Specifically, he took a calligraphy course out of sheer curiosity and intuition. Jobs said, quote, none of what I learned in this calligraphy class had even a hope of any practical application in my life. But 10 years later, when we were designing the first Macintosh computer, it all came back to me. And we designed it all into the Mac. It was the first computer with beautiful topography. If I had never dropped in on that single course in college, the Mac would have never had multiple typefaces or proportionally spaced fonts. If I had never dropped out of college, I would have never dropped in on this calligraphy class. And the personal computers might not have the wonderful topography that they do. Of course, it was impossible to connect the dots looking backward when I was in college, but it was very, very clear looking backwards 10 years later, end of quote. Jobs went on to say that you have to, quote, trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. This approach, said Jobs, has never let me down. It has made all the difference in my life. I feel blessed to be able to connect the dots backward in my own life and in a way I never could have imagined. Let me explain. When I was four months old, my dad was killed in a car accident. My mom, my two-year-old brother, and I moved in with my aunt, uncle, their four boys, and my grandmother. It was an incredibly loving home. But my biological brother had a strong personality, and sometimes there was tension in the house. I learned to be the child who helped soothe over the tension the one whose role was to keep the peace, if you will. And playing this role felt natural to me, and I was good at it. Much later in life, this desire to keep the peace developed into a professional interest, and eventually Chief Justice Ronald Moon hired me as the director of the Judiciary's Mediation Center. Later, he hired me as the director of the state court system, and after that, he appointed me to the family court bench. When you lose your father at four months old, you're traumatized. There's just no way around it. And it was that trauma, I think, that allowed me to really understand at the deepest level the trauma of so many of the youth who appeared before me in family court. And it was the trauma I experienced as a child that helped me to at least try and want to treat all those who appeared before me in family court with dignity, and with compassion. And there is no way I could effectively lead the YMCA 
one of the largest nonprofits in Hawaii with about 1,400 employees. If I had not gained the administrative experience as a director of the courts, and if I had not been informed of our community's needs by serving as a family court judge. Can you see how, in my own life, I can now almost magically connect the dots backwards? If we were to leave a legacy, we all must trust that the dots will somehow connect in our future. I think if we follow our heart, they are bound to do so. What else might help us ensure we leave a legacy? Well, the research shows that sustained legacies, those that really last long after we are gone, are those that are about people. Pericles told us this in 400 BC. He said, quote, your life has less to do with what is engraved in stone monuments and more to do with what is woven in the lives of others, end of quote. John Maxwell, in his book, The Laws of Leadership, said that those who leave the most lasting legacy are those who put their energy into people. In a Hawaii Business Magazine interview, Mike O'Connor said that he and your, and your Kuleana is to elevate those lives who are less fortunate. He went on to describe HCF's ever-growing role in helping Hawaii tackle some of its more difficult challenges. Sounds like the making of a legacy to me. I want to talk for a while about taking risks. I think if we are committed to leaving a legacy, we need to take risks, including and especially scary ones. After I had been retained for a second six-year term as a family court judge, I began to feel that I couldn't help the people in my court the way I wanted to. For many, it was too late. I also began to feel constrained. I wanted to advocate, to raise money for social services, to be entrepreneurial about addressing community needs, and I wanted to visit the people I sent to prison. I was limited by the code of judicial conduct in terms of what I could say and do. In short, I wanted to make a different contribution to community. I knew the YMCA of Honolulu impacted the lives of 100,000 people a year on Oahu. That is one out of 10 on this island. I knew the Y had terrific prevention and early intervention programs. And I knew that at the Y, I could continue to help kids and families, but in a very different way and at a very different place, much more on the front end, on the prevention end of the continuum. In short, as I reached the last chapter of my career, I wanted to put my energies to help leave a legacy on the front end of issues. You must risk in order to gain. I took a risk. I voluntarily stepped down from the bench, and I have never looked back. And here it is, I want to very quickly say how important it is, how absolutely critical it is to have family who emotionally support you achieving your legacy. Some of you may know my wife, Miley Meyer. When I was sworn in as a judge, I told the audience that Miley had always encouraged me to follow my heart, even if it meant a pay decrease, which in my case, it usually did. Later at the reception that night, three different spouses, separate from each other, asked me if I was serious when I said that about Miley. When I said that I was, each said they would never support their spouse leaving a job for another that paid less. To be honest with you, I couldn't believe what they were telling me. And I felt so fortunate to be with Miley. And then when I decided to step down from the bench to take that big risk, Miley was my biggest supporter. As I stand here before you, I can honestly say that if someday it turns out that I did leave a legacy, my wife Miley's support will be at the center of that legacy. And for those of you who are confident of your own legacy, but looking for how to ensure that those you work with or your children leave a legacy, let me say this. First, all the ideas I've talked about for you and for me apply equally to your staff and to your children. Make sure you are nurturing their legacy, not what you want their legacy to be. Make sure they are taking care of themselves physically and emotionally. Make sure you encourage your colleagues or your children to be purposeful, to look inward, and to focus their legacy, to figure out what they're good at 
and what they have passion for. And make sure you create a stable environment so your staff or children feel safe taking risks in their lives. But more than anything else, for those of you wanting some guidance about how to ensure that your professional team or your children leave a legacy, I implore you, above all else, to always give them a sense of hope. For many of the kids on my juvenile criminal calendar, I would tell the youth, you are my hero. Because they had just committed a crime, they'd look at me kind of confused, almost like Richard De Niro in the movie Taxi Driver. Are you talking to me? I'd say, yes, you, Kayola. You are my hero. Because after all you've been through, you are still alive. You are still getting up every day and giving it your best shot. They'd sit up straighter in their chairs, those young boys and girls who have been sexually abused, physically abused, or severely, severely neglected. I would end by saying, Keola, the next time I see you or hear about you, it'll be on TV or radio when you've done something great. They would walk out of my courtroom taller than when they came in. They walked out with hope. About a year after I stepped down from the bench, my 15-year-old daughter and I were walking out of a movie theater when somebody said, Judge Broderick. Now, as a judge, hearing your name shouted out in public can be unsettling, even frightening. I had 10,000 cases in family court, made some very difficult decisions, and upset a lot of people. So I hear, Judge Broderick. I turn around, and this young man, about 20, is standing there. And of course, just my luck, he's buffed. He looked vaguely familiar, but I really couldn't place him. He said, Judge Broderick, you sent me to prison, but I deserved it. I hope you're doing well, I said. Yes, I am. Good, take care of yourself, I said. And he said, I will. And Judge Broderick, keep watching. Watching, I asked? Yeah, keep watching the TV, because one day, you'll see me doing something great. If we were to leave a legacy, we all need to have hope. Finally, please remember that as you strive to leave a legacy in your life, or to create an environment where your colleagues or children can leave a legacy, know that in your lifetime, you might never come to know the legacy you left. Gregor Mendel is a poignant example. He actually discovered genetics. He discovered genetics. But no one realized it until 20 years after he died. Los Angeles Mayor Tom Bradley was my boss in the mid-80s. But it wasn't until 12 years later, the day I learned that he died, that I fully knew the influence he had had in my life. I actually couldn't sleep that night thinking about what he had taught me. I got up at 2 a.m. and wrote a viewpoint that was later published in the newspaper. You need to keep planting the seeds of your legacy, even though you may never live to see the fruit. As the Buddhists say, quote, work without attachment to the results, end of quote. Well, I started with a story, and I'll end with a story. The other day, my wife Miley was driving to work. She heard on the radio that there was one car going the wrong way on Nimitz. She knew her secretary, Mary, commuted to work on Nimitz, so she called her. She said, Mary, Mary, be careful. There's one car going the wrong way on Nimitz. Mary said, one car? Heck, there are hundreds and hundreds. We all have our unique perspective, but I would submit that we can all agree that as stewards of this world, we all owe it to those who come after us to leave this place better than we found it. Mahalo for listening.